Hello and welcome to Mindscapes, a series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is the Secretary General of a unique organization described by itself as a concert of nations, ASEAN. I'm delighted to welcome its Secretary General, Mr. Rodolfo Severino. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. What is ASEAN in, in terms of describing itself as a concert of nations, which is did recently? Uh, ASEAN was uh, born in 1967 with uh, five countries of Southeast Asia that uh, saw uh, in the future the need for greater cohesion, regional cohesion, uh, to make their way in the world. And that vision is uh, proving to be more and more valid, particularly in today's world of uh, globalization, information technology, and so on. Uh, to the extent that ASEAN has now formed an ASEAN free trade area, uh, that is only in terms of, uh, of uh, economic regionalism, but it has gone a long way also in cooperating in a whole lot of uh, social questions uh, in political matters, of course. And so this is, this is the meaning of uh, the term concert of nations, that these nations are quite literally act in concert on many things. But beyond acting in concert, uh, ASEAN envisions itself also as, a, as more and more of an economic unit that uh, we feel that uh, economic regionalism, regional integration is uh, the only way for us to be competitive in, uh, in this uh, rather uh, more competitive uh, uh, environment in the world economy. When you look at a, a, a concert of nations like, like ASEAN, what really comes to mind, of course, is the experiment with the EEC and how that has, uh, seems to inevitably have led to important elements of political integration right. uh, in, in, in many ways. And it, it often seems contrary uh, to what is perceived to be the national impulse of nationalism. And here you have a context of countries seeming to wanting to surrender that uh, for, 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 for a larger objective. Um, in, in, in what ways do you see ASEAN uh, unfolding in that sense? Well, uh, first I must uh, uh, note that uh, one of the things from which ASEAN suffers is this constant comparison with the European Union. And in a way, it's a form of flattery that uh, ASEAN is compared to the most advanced uh, regional entity in the world, uh, one that uh, is rather unique. And that's the other point, that uh, there's nothing like the European Union. Uh, OAU, the o Organization of African Unity, is not like uh, the EU. Uh, the or Organization of American States is not like uh, EU and so on. Uh, however, ASEAN knows that it uh, can learn a lot from the experience of EU uh, taking its own circumstances and history into account uh, without uh, necessarily going all the way uh, as the EU has done. But we're not prejudging anything. Uh, ASEAN is, is bent on deepening, broadening its, uh, uh, its, uh, its market, its, uh, its association, and uh, if it leads to be becoming more like the EU, then so be it. But this is, this is subject to constant discussion in, among the member states. Mm -hmm. What are some of the sort of critical uh, challenges that ASEAN face, faces uh, in terms of the um, diversity of its, uh, of, its, of its political systems of, of that, that govern it? Uh, and, I, and I will refrain, I will follow your lead and refrain from comparisons uh, with the EC or even the, uh, the, 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 the African associations. Um, uh, how do you begin to resolve this? Is this by sort of looking primarily, focusing on the economic agenda, which inevitably unites nations? Yes, you know, in, uh, I, I think uh, you've put it uh, correctly, that uh, in one of the weaknesses and at the same time, one of the strengths of ASEAN is its great diversity. And this is, this is uh, 
another uh, difference that it has with uh, Europe. Uh, Europe has uh, a, almost a single civilization, uh, common uh, religious values, uh, a long history of uh, contact and association, even intermarriages even, which you don't find in Southeast Asia. So when we are building ASEAN, we have to take these, this diversity into uh, great account. We have to g take uh, the diversity as a given. And we proceed from this, uh, this reality. And I say that it is also one of the strengths because, for example, if you have an integrated market of such diverse, uh, uh, of countries with such diverse uh, situations, then if you were a foreign investor, for example, you have a choice of, uh, of where to locate your investments, whether you, you want uh, uh, inexpensive labor, or you want high tech, or you want efficient services, and, and so on. And, uh, but at the same time, having located yourself in the place which is most advantageous to you, uh, you have this, this market, uh, this rather large regional market to, uh, as, as, as your own. And it's a good platform to, for, for dealing with the rest of the world. So uh, this is something that uh, works to our benefit. But at the same time, as your question implies, it, it makes decision making also more, more difficult. Uh, but as I said, this is something that is given. That is uh, something that we have to work with. But uh, I have made a point um, some time ago that uh, nowadays, uh, we have to move toward a certain convergence in, even in terms of politics, because uh, the um, economic demands nowadays uh, require that uh, you open your markets. You open your markets not just to goods, but also to services and ideas. And the nature of modern technology requires the free flow of ideas, so these has implications for for the way uh, you you conduct your uh, a state conducts its relations with its people and with the rest of the world, and uh, at the same time, the um, uh, the uh, perception of uh, of investors, uh, both domestic and uh, and foreign, has to be that of a country that is governed by the rule of law, that uh, where business transactions, uh, governmental transactions, are more transparent. So here, we, we're, uh, our member states are realizing that, uh, that the, the, the way uh, to the future is more uh, openness, more pluralism. But because uh, the member states have different uh, uh, histories, different circumstances, then uh, this convergence will have to take place uh, at different paces. But uh, I think the direction is quite clear. Mm -hmm. What about um, uh, the, you know, the, the, the relationship, the participation, the involvement of, of diverse uh, states as, as China and Japan and, 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 and the United States and, and India in a sense? And, and I, before we take the conversation much further, it, it, it's sort of an inevitable question that um, where does uh, ASEAN perceive uh, India uh, to be positioned uh, in terms of its relationship with ASEAN. Now, even as uh, ASEAN deepens its own integration within itself, it remains open to the rest of the world. And one of the expressions of this openness is not only its adherence to WTO rules and, uh, and so on, and in general, uh, being open to foreign investments, foreign trade, but uh, but also open to close cooperation with uh, other regions and other countries in the world. And one of the uh, fast progressing uh, schemes in this is the one that we call ASEAN plus three, meaning ASEAN's uh, linkage with Northeast Asia, with China, Japan, and Korea. And uh, this has acquired, particularly in recent years, a uh, great urgency and priority for, for ASEAN because the financial crisis has shown how interconnected our 
relationship, relationships are. Even with the perception of uh, fund managers, of investors, uh, view East Asia as, as, a, as a, almost a single entity, uh, although to some extent that's not justified at all. But uh, this is another reality that we have to face, that we are all, that we are, the countries of East Asia are looked upon as, uh, as having related economies. And uh, so we, uh, we launched this process, the ASEAN Plus Three, in which um, uh, we jointly monitor the uh, economic trends, economic developments. Uh, we are now working on a financial arrangement a network of uh, bilateral uh, agreements uh, through which uh, the countries of the region, the 13 countries, would help uh, provide the financial resources if one of them gets into some difficulty, like balance of payments uh, difficulty. This is the, the notion of the Asian Monetary Fund in, in, uh, or an ASEAN uh, Monetary uh, Fund uh, on the lines of the IMF and, yeah. and there's been some sort of... It has been uh, linked to that and in fact uh, this idea of an Asian Monetary Fund has been floated but we are not at that stage yet and uh, in fact we are not even sure if that is that's really the way to go but uh, the fact uh, that the ASEAN Plus Three is cooperating very closely on financial matters now. Uh, could uh, open the door to further arrangements. Uh, some are even talking about a common Asian currency or a common ASEAN currency. And um, and here I think uh, India uh, has a place uh, because uh, ASEAN Plus Three, for example, does not uh, ha does not stop at financial cooperation, but uh, we work on, uh, the ministers have decided that uh, we place uh, great priority on trade investments, technology transfer, SMEs, uh, s small and medium enterprises, and information technology. Uh, we are also cooperating closely on, uh, or started to cooperate closely on, on the Mekong, development of the Mekong Basin. Now, um, I'm not saying that uh, India should necessarily uh, uh, join this process, mm -hmm. but uh, a similar um, a similar linkage could be explored between ASEAN and India, and uh, that is, it's one of the things that I uh, have come, uh, that I would like to discuss during this visit, how to mm -hmm. strengthen the linkages between ASEAN and, mm -hmm. and India. And there are certain uh, obvious areas that, uh, that uh, lend themselves to ASEAN-India cooperation. Uh, IT is one thing, and uh, the, the development of indigenous pharmaceutical industries is uh, is another. Uh, the um, and we can learn a lot uh, from India on uh, its uh, and, and the way that it has pushed forward uh, technical education. And well, it uh, seems to be considerably more. Uh, um, enthusiasm, shall I put it, uh, in India about participating in, 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 in the ASEAN experiment uh, than there seems to be in ASEAN. Would, that, would you say that that is a fair uh, description of this? I think one of the problems is that uh, uh, relationships of, uh, of uh, this nature usually proceed from economic uh, r relationships. And what has happened between ASEAN and India in the past is that there has been a very uh, wide gap in the knowledge uh, between uh, between ASEAN and uh, between the ASEAN and the Indian business communities, for example, they uh, they don't know enough about uh, about each other, about uh, ASEAN businessmen not knowing enough about business conditions in India and uh, uh, Indian businessmen not knowing enough about uh, business conditions in Asia. Not that. Uh, they don't know enough, but uh, I, I believe that uh, the, uh, the knowledge is often out of date. Uh, there is a lag in the perception of the business communities about uh, conditions, uh, developments in each other. Particularly now, the conditions are evolving quite uh, rapidly. And this is something that uh, maybe the uh, business communities themselves and uh, the governments can do something about. And uh, so when, when you talk about the lack of enthusiasm, this is one of uh, the problems 
uh, when I was in the Philippine Foreign Service, uh, it was also my problem that the, the Philippine business community was uh, had uh, rather outdated ideas about uh, within the nature of the Indian economy, and uh, it's, it, it took uh, it takes quite an effort to to uh, stir up their enthusiasm. But at the governmental level, I think uh, ASEAN is uh, quite acutely aware of, uh, of the importance of India playing a role in the, the, uh, the affairs of Southeast Asia from a strategic point of view. Uh, the India is, is a big country. It has uh, had long uh, international experience including experience in Southeast Asia. It uh, seeks good relations with Northeast Asia, which is also our intention. And, uh, and uh, so we have a great deal, a lot of common interests with respect to the strategic situation in, in this part of the world. And uh, so there is plenty of potential there in a state to state. But as I said, uh, a lot of uh, uh, Inter, international relations uh, are nowadays based on the economic relationship, and this, that's why this is something that we have to work on. Mm -hmm. In what ways do you think that uh, you mentioned convergence, um, uh, a shrinking planet with communication technology is growing so dramatically? Um, what kind of future do you see? And, and, I, and I'm, I sort of asked this question in a, rad, in, in a larger philosophical uh, strain. Uh, do you see alliances now being limited um, to, to sort of regional ones, uh, even though they're economic? Uh, you know, the world has changed. It, 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 it isn't sort of necessarily um, more expedient to do business with your neighbor just because he is your neighbor. Uh, so how do you see this, this process of global alliances and, and connections unfolding? I think that there's a definite trend toward uh, what, to what is now called globalization. The, uh, the worry in countries like those in ASEAN and uh, like India is that globalization, we have to ensure that globalization uh, proceeds in a, in a way that takes our own interests into account and that uh, the way it proceeds is not tilted toward those who are already uh, uh, powerful with, uh, with substantial resources and so on. And, uh, so far, uh, we, uh, we, ha we know that uh, uh, liberal liberalization of trade and uh, reducing barriers to trade is, is good for overall efficiency, good for our industries, uh, competition is good for us. But at the same time, we have to make sure that the way it, it proceeds is balanced and fair. So right there, India and ASEAN have uh, something in common. The, uh, pushing our agenda in WTO and in other international uh, economic uh, uh, forums. So um, uh, the, uh, at the same time, we, uh, we cannot wait for this process to, uh, this is subject to a lot of uh, disputes, uh, not only between developed and developing countries, but, with, but with between developed countries themselves. Uh, who, as, uh, for example, the disputes on many issues between the EU and the United States. Uh, in the meantime, while this process is unfolding, uh, we in ASEAN, because individually we are small players in uh, the global competition, uh, we, it is in our interest to coalesce as a region in order better to deal with uh, with uh, the, um, uh, the competitive uh, uh, situation in, uh, in the world. Uh, the, even from the point of view of competitiveness for investments, for example, uh, nowadays uh, the big investors would rather invest in large integrated markets, um, whether it's continents like uh, China, India, uh, EU, uh, the United States, or uh, free trade areas like ASEAN and uh, what's growing in Eastern Europe, what uh, East Africa is trying to do, uh, Mercosur in Latin America, uh, the Andean community in Central America. 
So the trend now is toward larger regional markets. Uh, uh, we think that uh, these will help promote fairer and more balanced global uh, trade. Uh, there are also free trade uh, agreements being forged bilaterally between nations. And uh, my own view of this is that, uh, again, this, these are, this could serve as building blocks for the global and the regional system, provided that they are consistent with WTO and in the case of ASEAN with uh, the ASEAN free trade area. Uh, you know, the ASEAN countries have made a, a, a remarkable recovery uh, from what was largely perceived as consequences of flight of capital uh, from the region. Um, it, it is a region in which there are vast inequities in terms of the uh, economic, uh, both the, the immediate economic potential and the economic achievement of the nations uh, of, of ASEAN. Uh, how, do you, how do you manage to sort of balance these inequities and yet arrive at a consensus? It seems to be a, an enormous uh, triumph, I don't know, of the Secretariat, of the political will uh, of, of, of the nations uh, to be able to, to carry this forward. I mean, you ordinarily, ordinarily see alliances uh, between nations where there, there's, there's far more commonality of, of, of status. And I think this is uh, uh, partly a function of necessity. Uh, all Southeast Asian countries see that the only way they can make their way in the world is by working together. Now, uh, you rightly point to the great diversity, the, the disparities uh, between uh, ASEAN countries. And this is something that, uh, that we have to deal with. And, but uh, the way for the less advanced countries to catch up with the uh, more advanced countries is, is one, they, they, they have to do the, the necessary, uh, exert the necessary effort to, and adopt the necessary policies to open up their economies, to uh, bring in investments, uh, develop their human resources, because now that is the key to economic development. Uh, and uh, in general, do now what it takes to bring in investments and to promote, uh, promote exports and uh, get into the information age and so on. Uh, it's basically a national responsibility. But um, in terms of the region, uh, ASEAN is now focusing on the development of the newer members precisely for this reason. And one of the vehicles is to uh, pay attention to the development of the Mekong Basin because all the newer members are located there. And another way we are, we're doing it is uh, by focusing our cooperation and human resource development on the newer members because uh, we know that in, in terms of human resources, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, behind uh, the, the older members. And we're looking to the uses of IT for, for them to, to kind of leapfrog the development process. Uh, so this has to be a combination of national effort and regional cooperation. And also, uh, we welcome the cooperation of uh, other countries. Uh, Japan, for example, is, is involved uh, with us in this. Uh, China is seeking to link up with us. And this is another message that um, I'm bringing to, to India, that uh, certainly in India's experience, its expertise, uh, its enormous achievements in certain areas of science and technology, and in public policy uh, could be very useful for the newer members of ASEAN. And, uh, and here, certainly, uh, Indian cooperation would be most valuable and most welcome. Mm -hmm. Give us a sort of a, 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 a concluding uh, vision uh, for ASEAN in, say, 10 years from now. Um, where do you see it? Oh, it's, it's uh, really hard to imagine because uh, if you will go back 10 years ago, I don't think any of us could foresee that ASEAN would get this far mm -hmm. in terms of economic integration in terms of uh, uh, even membership. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly nobody foresaw mm -hmm. 
the, the kind of uh, financial crisis mm -hmm. that we underwent. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to predict. To what degree uh, did you see the future of uh, ASEAN unfolding beyond the economic sphere or, or, or aspects that are directly related to, to economic growth, such as a common defense policy, uh, you mentioned convergence and mm. issues such as human rights. Do you see that kind of swell? Of yeah, I think the trend is uh, toward, uh, at, at the very least, uh, better governance, better uh, both in the corporate uh, field and uh, in public affairs. Uh, the trend toward pluralism, greater pluralism, is there. It's very visible. The, uh, and certainly the more openness, uh, because the, this is inevitable in the light of uh, the advances in uh, technology. Uh, now, how to manage this without destabilizing countries is something I think that we can cooperate on. And obviously, this is a very delicate subject. It touches on the sensitivity, sure. sovereignty sure. of countries. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think that uh, if done in a friendly way, there, there's uh, there's a lot of th there are a lot of things that can be done by way of consultation, encouragement, and so on. And this is uh, something that uh, India could uh, be involved in. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, uh, I think uh, we will see uh, Southeast Asia and indeed uh, uh, other parts of the world uh, move toward uh, this uh, this kind of society, uh, greater tolerance. Uh, openness, uh, pluralism, and uh, India has uh, set a very fine example. Uh, the, it has, there's certainly many problems here. Uh, the, some of the social problems have, have not been, uh, been addressed to their conclusion. But um, the method for, of, uh, of governing the country, of uh, managing the economy, and, uh, and uh, I think uh, this is uh, we can see that uh, here uh, the uh, the Indian system is moving in the in a salutary direction, and it's certainly something that we can learn.